Okay, so as you just saw then, from last episode where I rebuilt the 3236 Weber DGV, uh, I fitted it. You could see the start straight off the bat, then with the choke on, and uh, the last one where it was idling fine. I've been driving it for, uh, well, since then, whatever that date was, often, and it's been working great, so it's been really, really good. Now, one thing that I want to do was fit electronic ignition to the distributor. So that's the task today. So let's come and have a look at what actually is going to go into it. So this is what we've got here. Igniter 2 from Petronix. Um, let's open it. Well, as you can see, it's already open. Uh, this... You now what that is, a couple of screws. Instructions, which I'm sure will come in handy. Um, this, some warnings. So this is the bit itself. This is what replaces the points. And a magnet. Now I'm a bit worried because, look, where's the magnet there? So, and a magnet. Now I'm a bit worried because I understand that most of these kits, not all, but apparently like a vast majority come with a little spacer. Uh, so you can put a space between this and the magnet as it slides onto the middle of the distributor. This didn't come with one, I don't know if I lost one or if this is one of the kits that doesn't require one. Um, but I do have a little, you know, adjuster gauge that I've got, you know, for other things automotive like spark plug gaps. So I'll use that apparently according, I've already read the instructions and according to that um, zeros, uh, 0.003 of an inch is the gap so shouldn't be a problem there. Um, I've also got this, which is a flamethrower 2 um, coil. Looks pretty straightforward. Positive, positive and negative. Not much to it. So the first step, as with anything, when you're working with wires on your car, unplug the battery. Step 2, remove the distributor cap. Good to inspect under here uh, and give it a clean. All right, next step is take off the rotor. Remember which direction it goes. So right now it's facing to the left. If you have bad memory like me, uh, it's good to take photos and mess it up anyway. But rotor cap comes off really nice and easy. Again, just make sure to clean that end before you put it back on. Give it a rub down with very light sandpaper, very light rub down. You're just really trying to clean it. You're not trying to make it go shorter. Next step is identify which side is the negative on the coil. It looks like this side. So disconnect that. What am I doing? Easiest way is just unplug it like that. Next up, you're removing the points and condenser. There's two screws for that. Well, two that I can see so far. Just be careful not to, and I'm saying this and I'm gonna do it, but don't drop. Yeah, worried about doing that myself. Don't drop the screws into the distributor. Can't imagine that would be a good idea. But as I said, it's probably something I will do. All right, I got them. Feel better? Mm. Okay, pull it out, off, out. All right, get this screw out. Oh. All right, points are out. Okay, we're dropping a few things on the ground here. Pulled out this plastic bit, so that's where the grommet goes through here. This on top is pretty dirty. Uh, this, yeah, I also got out that earth, so I'll give that in 
give that all a clean in there and let's see how we go with the kit. So it's good to make sure that plate, that base plate that the igniter is going to sit on is nice and clean so that it, because it earths the, um, it's an earth so it needs to have a good contact. If you give it a clean with acetone that is probably the best or wax and grease remover. Alright once it's clean it's time to sort out how this is going to fit so you can see where the two screw holes are. So the kit came with three screws. Alright, so as you can see, the plate is on, the magnetic, uh, some shadow there, the magnetic module is slid down. What I needed to do was press with both fingers on each side. Don't be afraid to put a bit of pressure in it or exert a bit of pressure to get it down. It went down quite easy. I was probably babying it a little bit too much at first. Um, you can see on the left there, uh, there's a screw that comes in the kit that bolts to the, uh, screws onto the plate for the earth that completes the circuit by going into the distributor that was there with the points anyway so that wire should be fine. Um, the only problem is as you can see at the very top, I don't know how well you can see that there with the shadows but oh, right over there, right at the very top is a little clip for the vacuum now so I have to basically, I spoke to the guys at Petronix, um, shout out to Jonathan for helping me out with this has been really helpful and their support is really great so if you do get this or a kit for any of your distributors to remove the points and put electronic igni um, ignition in um, they're really helpful so their support is great but I need to shave off an edge there uh, which is going to be fun I'm just going to try and mark a bit of a guide so when I am cutting I can at least look at what I'm Try to keep it straight. I'm hoping that's enough, but uh, could be more. Anyway, I don't know how easy or hard it's going to be to cut either. It's quite thick. So if this cutting device is good, I have my doubts. But only one way to find out. definitely helps when you've got two hands on it. Alright, let's see if that's actually enough of a cut. Okay, so you can see the vacuum slid there. I would say I've successfully notched it. Alright, let's connect the earth wire, put the magnet on, rotor on and close it up. Okay, you got the earth on. Now to get this piece on, make sure there's no hairs on it. There we go, all the way down. Rotor on. Oh yes, of course. Run this around the edge. Slide it in there. And just slot it through so it's running around. Alright. Get this on top. And screw it down. The distributor cap's tightened on, the rotor's in. Got no light. Uh, just make sure that all the spark plug leads connecting to the engine and the rotor are in order and still tight. So next thing I'll be installing is the flamethrower to uh, the ignition coil I've got already was in the car when I bought it, which was a fair few years ago. I have never changed it. Seems to work okay, but why not upgrade to this? Now the instructions are saying to remove, you can have it with the ballast resistor as seen in that image but on the right but on the left is optimal apparently for better spark so I'm going to go with that so essentially it means I'm going to remove the ballast resistor so I can see the red and black wires aren't going to reach where the distributor would sit anyway um, so I'm going to have to extend them.
Okay, so it seems like the flamethrower is just a little bit too big for this clamp. We're just going to take a wild guess here, but seeing this is the positive side, uh, there's this and this connected to it, so I'll connect that to the positive. Uh, Let's go, let's get out. This is the negative one, so this negative. Um, I don't believe I need it at this point, but fuck, who knows. So I messed around with the wiring. Um, I even tried to run one of these wires just directly to the ignition fuse um, and just have the two wires that run off um, the negative and positive down to the from the coil, uh, from the igniter to up to the coil, um, and it would start, but it wouldn't um, idle. So this, what I've done is I've basically connected just a little jumper cable between the two. This is that would go in. These two connected to the, sorry, those two connected to the. Um, what do you call it, the ballast resistor, so now I've just put a little jumper wire between them, we're going to have to neaten that up because it looks like a bag of shit. Um, but I thought I could run without that, those wires too, but it seems like not the case. Uh, anyway, I don't know if this is going to work out or not, so let's start it up and see what happens. Alright, let's see if this thing will start and if it will idle and how it sounds. Seems alright. See how it goes after it idles for a bit longer. Okay, so that's after five minutes of idling or warming up with the choke on. Um, seems like it's a little low, so I might play around with the idle screw, but I also need to set the timing. So I'm not going to do that. I'm going to take it to my um, mate down the road to have a quick play around and then should be good to go. Alright, now that we've got the electronic ignition in. Once the timing's sorted, uh, next thing I'm going to do is see how I can make one Weber into two and fit them. And these bad boys. Should get a nice little bit of extra power with twin Webers and extractors. Alright, see you on the next one.